Tito's place in history is secure. He'll be remembered as the proud Yugoslavian chief who stood up to the Soviets and led his nation along a separate road to socialism. For Tito, that road had its beginnings almost 40 years ago in the Balkan Mountains. There, during the desperate days of World War II, the man, Josip Bruz, became famous under his alias Tito as the brilliant leader of the Yugoslav partisans who battled Hitler's troops. Tito came to leadership the hard way, captured by the Russians during the First World War. He became a revolutionary who fought in the Bolshevik uprising. In the 30s, he was a Communist Party organizer underground, recruiting Yugoslav volunteers to fight in Spain against Franco. By the time Hitler invaded Yugoslavia in 1941, Tito was head of the Communist Party there. As he fought the Germans, Tito also fought his political rivals. At war's end, he executed his main opponent. Tito then took control. He proclaimed Yugoslavia a people's republic. Everyone thought his regime would be subservient to Moscow. Instead, Tito abandoned communist economic dogmas. He rejected Soviet insistence on collectivized farms. He set up a form of self-managed socialism run by the workers. Tito fought alone during the partisan days, and there was Slavic fear of the Russians. So he insisted on running things his own way once he took power. When he defied Stalin, the Russians told him to yield or stand alone against the Soviet bloc. So Tito broke with the Kremlin. He took Yugoslavia on the course that he followed to the end of his time, an independent communist state. By 1956, the Russians were back in Belgrade, this time under Khrushchev, and they were apologizing, saying that Yugoslavia had a right to develop its own brand of communism. Like so many world communist leaders, Tito enjoyed the good life. He liked cigars and whiskey. He took a beautiful third wife, Jovanka, much younger than he, but in 1977, she tried to move more Serbians into the government, and so Tito had her placed under house arrest. He was always well turned out, very careful of his appearance, even dyeing his hair. His style was lavish, and he liked to get away to his private island in the Adriatic. Some called Tito the first communist king. Tito had enormous vitality and often worked long days to strengthen what he referred to as the third force, the non-aligned nations. Even then, he remained independent of Chairman Brezhnev and at the same time continuing to be a friend and a trading partner of the United States and other Western nations. Ironically, while he stood up to the Russians, Tito stamped out dissent at home. He silenced or imprisoned his own personal political critics. Marshal Tito was the last survivor of the men who ruled over the middle years of this century. But he is gone now, and in Yugoslavia there is no one of his stature to follow him, and so there are many questions about what will happen to Yugoslavia now that he is gone.